Welcome to another video by the brilliant expat Tappy. A video titled Jack Celine Laid to Rest for oh, Good. <laughs> and yes, you're going to see evidence of that, folks. Now, folks, these videos of mine concerning this Japanese orbiter, Celine or Kaibia, whichever you want to call it, are the result of a certain comment by a NASA nutcase. One big monkey. He made a stupid statement that I could not find anything wrong with any of his videos. So I said, okay, you put a challenge to me, I'll accept the challenge. I'll show you how stupid your videos are and I'll find loads of faults with them. And the one I picked was one where he shows what is supposed to be the Apollo 15 landing site taken by this Japanese orbiter, Selene. And what the idiot didn't realize is, if this was really a photo 30 years on by a Japanese orbiter, Selene, don't you think it would have shown the descent stage still on the Apollo 15 landing site? I mean, if they came home in the ascent stage, shouldn't the descent stage still be there? Well, the photo you're going to see by this idiot, one big monkey, shows that there's no sign of the descent stage. And a later comment by this one big monkey is that uh, the camera couldn't pick up uh, the descent stage because the resolution wasn't high enough. And I responded by putting a video out showing a number of these Kai Gear photos which were 100% fake. And the star of the show, folks, was another photo supposed to be taken by this Celine, and what it showed was the Apollo 15 landing site. And amazingly enough, in this photo, the whole limb for Apollo 15 was in the photo. It showed the ascent stage still on top of the descent stage. And this idiot think that these Kai Gear photos were genuine. And folks, I'll give you a quick glance at those two photos here right now before we go any further for you to take a look at them yourself. Now folks, here's a photo here from that crap video by this one big monkey claim to be showing a photo that was supposed to be taken around about 30 years after Apollo taken with a Japanese orbiter, Selene, showing the Apollo 15 landing site. And yes, folks, here's the claim by this idiot one big monkey. A 3D rendering of the Apollo 15 landing site at Hadley Rill, created using JAXA Selene data and QGIS software. The yellow marker is the location of the lunar module. Well, I can't see it, folks. Let's see if you can see it. According to this nutter, the reason you can't see it is the resolution of the camera wasn't high enough. Now, look what we got here, folks. I've done a close cropping of that so-called Apollo 15 landing site. Now, if that was genuine and taken with that Selene, why the hell would they need to put a yellow tent over it? What's wrong with showing the lander or the descent stage still left there? Like I said, this nutter claims Selene can't spot the descent stage because the resolution wasn't high enough. Well, let me tell you folks, due to new discoveries, I've got something very, very special for you coming up later on with this photo. I tell you that now just to put the worries up. Idiot from Down Under, Joan Evans and especially Cornelius Crew. Now, let's do some more investigating of this Apollo 15 landing site, shall we? Now, folks, take a look at this photo here, AS15-92-12433. Now, here is that Apollo 15 landing site, easily recognized by the craters on the hill. You've got four craters, small craters on the left of the hill, and you've got two bright craters on the right side. Now, the limb should be smack in the middle of those craters. There you are, folks. We've now got the Apollo 15 site showing the limb. And as you can see, just on 
the right side of the lamb, you can see one of the bright craters on the hill. Now, folks, here's another photo I put to that idiot, one big monkey. A photo, again, supposed to be the Apollo 15 landing site and it's supposed to have been taken by Kai Gear 30 years after they're supposed to have come back. But as I showed in here, the lamb is complete. The ascent stage is still on top of the descent stage. So by the look of it, they never came back from Apollo 15. The lamb is up there complete. And this idiot is doubting. Uh, that's a genuine Celine or Kaiga photo, but read it on the bottom. It shows Celine Kaigia filming the Apollo 15 landing site. Now folks, what I'm going to show you in this video is the reason NASA never got to the moon. They are too thick. They haven't got the brains. Because I'm going to show you here that by employing these mentally insane nutcases like Cornelius Crew, Joel Evans, this one big monkey, and Brian Pop Robson, I'm going to show you that by employing such idiots like that, all they are doing is making people like me more determined to dig up the truth, to expose their lies. Now what you were going to see today wouldn't have come to light if it wasn't for these idiots, Joan Evans, Cornelius Crew, One Big Monkey, it wouldn't have come to light. Because what I'm going to show you in this video is not only is Apollo fake, I'm going to show you that a Japanese orbiter is fake. I'm going to show you that the Chinese rover is fake. Now, with photos, if there's 50 photos they claim they took on the moon, and one of them was proven to be taken on the Earth, you don't have to bother with the other 49. One photo is all you need. If one is fake, all the rest are fake. As you are going to see in this video now. Okay folks, I've just shown you this photo here that they claim is a photo of the Apollo 50 landing site with the LEM complete, taken by the Japanese orbiter Selene 30 years after they're supposed to have left the moon. And as you can see, the LEM is complete, the ascent stage is still on top. I asked the nutcase John Evans, how the hell has this photo got crosshairs on it, which are supposed to be from a Hasselblad camera? There you are folks, crosshairs on a photo that's supposed to be taken with the Japanese orbiter, Selene. Okay folks, what do you think of what you've seen so far now? Well, I can assure you, I've got a lot more surprises coming to you. Many more real crackers. And what I can assure you is, every one of these photos taken by Kaigia, Selene, the Chinese orbiter, or the Chinese rover, what I can assure you, they are all fake. They're nothing more than copies of old Apollo photos with a little bit of doctoring done, a little bit added here, a little bit taken off there, and I'm going to prove that to you. Okay, folks, I'll try and be as quick as possible with this now. Let's go back to the time Bill Casing first started stating that the landings were fake. Now, one thing Bill Casing challenged NASA on is, he said, NASA, point the largest landscape telescope at the moon and if you can show me a lunar lander, I'll never say another word about an Apollo hoax. NASA refused to participate in that. There was all talk that these land-based telescopes are not powerful enough and they can't see anything on the moon. Well, if that's the case, why not fetch Bill in and say, Bill, come here, take a look yourself, see if you can spot it. There you are, you can't see anything, Bill. That would have been a feather in the cap for NASA. Or, if they went, and these land-based telescopes are powerful enough, they could have brought Bill in and said, You are Bill, take a look. There you are, there's a lander there, you can see it. That would have been another feather in the cap for NASA. But no, they wouldn't participate in anything with ground-based telescopes. And what that started now is a lot more people asking, Hey, let's take a look through one of these telescopes. So NASA felt now they have backed into a corner. They've got everybody inquiring about land-based telescopes. So, how do they get out of that? Well, I remember how they started to get out of it. They announced they're going to send this LRO 
around the moon. And it's only going to be 20, 23 miles above the moon. It's going to give real close-ups. You'll be able to see two ants having a jump if there was any up there. That was the build-up to this LRO. But when the photos come out, they were all disappointed. Nothing but black photos with little white dots on them. You couldn't see anything. They were completely useless. And you had a lot of people, Jared White as well, questioning the validity of these LRO photos. And I was doing the same. And what did that lead to? NASA realized they're again backed into a corner. So they've got to get people to take their minds off the LRO. So what did they do? They cooked up this other story about, oh, Japan is sending this Kaigia, Selene, up there. And they'll be real clear focus of ants having a jump on the moon. Oh, so we're waiting now patiently for this Kaigia. We've taken our mind off the LRO now, as soon as we took it off the land-based telescopes, we are all waiting for this Kaigia. And when those came along, they were disappointed. They, they are proven to be fake. You can see that they're fake. And another thing, what you had then, you may all have missed this, but when China announced they're sending a rover to the moon, that's giving the message to the people of the world, well, if China can do it, then that proves NASA done it. But, again, that was proven to be fake. They stopped putting out photos from this Chinese rover because everybody was realizing it was fake. And I'm going to show you an example of that now. This is of one site. It claims to be Chang'e 4, a Chinese lunar rover, taking a photo of the Apollo 17 landing site. And amazingly enough, what I'll show you, brightening up this, this photo has got crosshairs as well, as you'll see in the next brightened up photo. There you are, folks. A photo taken 40 years after the event by the Chinese rover, a photo of the Apollo 17 landing site, and again with the Apollo 17 LEM intact. Now, folks, that photo there, that's supposed to be taken by the Chinese rover, Chang'e 4, you'd most probably get the idiots, John Evans and Cornelius Crew, asking me, where did you get that photo from? It's not in the Chinese library. You must have faked it. To which I say, you're quite right. It might not be in the Chinese library because it's a fake photo just made up in the last couple of weeks. And here's where I got it from. An article from the Daily Express in the UK. Chang'e 4 Chinese Lunar Rover photographs a gel-like substance far side of the moon. Now folks, the next step you're going to get here is the idiots Cornelius Crew and Joe Evans displaying their ignorance and insanity by shouting and bawling, hey, that's not a NASA site, you stupid bloody idiot. NASA can't be held responsible for what the Daily Express puts out. To which I say, Joan, screwy, you better go and have a talk to your buddy from Bill Erickle. Because he's paid to police the Daily Express, like he was paid to police the Daily Mail, which was the first propaganda machine for NASA. That's what it is, Joan. The Daily Express is now today the propaganda machine for NASA. Because they know the readers of the Daily Express are the most gullible fools in the UK, and they can be persuaded anything. They can be persuaded that shit makes good toothpaste. So the Daily Express is the ideal place for NASA to dump their lies. Anything that appears in the Daily Express relating to the moon or to space is all NASA material. NASA material, Joan Evans. The Daily Express are not in it for making up stories. They're in it for making money, just getting paid to publish other articles. And that is what they do for NASA. Anything that appears in those Daily Express articles is NASA's work. NASA's lies, Joan Evans, as you were going to see. Okay, Joan Evans, Paul the Pratt, one big monkey, screwy, 
Any doubt of this one being a Kaigia? You can see Jack's bottom right hand corner. Let's take a look at it when it's brightened up, shall we? There you are, folks. As with the brightened up ones, a boxed in earth, a composited photo. Another Kaigia? Let's take a look at it brightened up, shall we? Oops, another composited fake Joan Evans. And what about this one, Joan Evans? As you can see, bottom right hand corner, Jackson. And tell us, Joan, what's that spotlight coming down in the center of the photo, Joan? What's that out in space? Yes, we can see it clearer here with it brightened up, can't we, Joan? That's what the idiot, mysterious mystery, calls the dinga dongolo effect. Okay, Joan, here's another one. As you can see, it's marked Kai Gear at the bottom, or Jaxa. There you are, Joan, you can see it better. Mysterial Mysteries Dinga Dongolo effect. A red spotlight coming down in the middle, out in space. Now, what the hell would that be, Joan? Here you are, Joan. Here's another one. It's supposed to be a photo of the Earth by Kai Gear. As you can see, Jaxa in the bottom right hand corner. Let's take a look at that right now, shall we, Joan? There you are, Joan Evans, one big monkey, Cornelius Crew, same as all the rest. Brightened up, you can see the square compositing box around the earth. Okay, folks, now to wrap up this video, we come to my trump card. A real gem, I assure you. <laughs> It'll take a bit longer to explain, but you're going to enjoy this. Now, like I told you, all the Selene or Kaigia photos are nothing more than rehashed Apollo photos. And this one is going to prove that to you right now. This is a real gem because it not only involves rehashing of Apollo photos, it also involves whistleblowers. It's one that the numbskull Cornelius crew is going to love. Now this photo is not a full rehashed photo from Apollo. It's a part of Apollo photo and a part of new added today. Proving it's fake today and it's a part of an Apollo photo before and it contains whistleblowers. Clues! There you are, folks. Take a look at that there now. Really looks impressive, doesn't it? It looks as if it's the satellite Kagia going over the top of a mountain. It can see the top of a mountain and it can see the lower ground of the moon behind it. Really looks impressive, doesn't it, folks? That gives you the impression it's taken from orbit. But take a look at near the top of this mountain, just a little bit to the right. And look what you seem to have, some rocks sticking up. Can you all see them? Now I wonder what those rocks are. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Now folks, look what I've done here. Instead of brightening up the photo, like I did with all the rest, what I've done is darken the photo. Where you can see the majority of the mountain has gone black. How come those what appear to be rocks do not go black? They are still bright. Now, if they were rocks, the same as the rest of the mountain, wouldn't they have gone dark the same as the rest of the mountain? Well, wait till you see what I've got to reveal about these so-called or so appearing rocks on the surface. Wait for some more photos coming up now, folks. Okay, folks, look at this photo here now. I really close cropped the top of that mountain photo showing you these objects which look like rocks on the surface. Now, looking at the shape of them, do they look like rocks to you? Well, wait till you see what they really are, folks. Take a look at this nice big mountain here, folks. Any of you think that uh, Kai Gear could fly over the top of that mountain, folks? <laughs> It's bloody hilarious what's coming up, I can tell you. How many of you have seen this photo before? There you are, folks. Now read the text here for this number, for this photo. <laughs> You've never heard anything or seen anything so bloody hilarious in your life. Dave took this 500mm photo of Mount Hadley Delta 
out of the window after EVA3. He is also having trouble keeping the lens steady. Now what they're saying here, folks, they got in the lem, they're ready to come home, and this Dave took the photo of this mount through the window of the lem before they left. What do you think of that so far, folks? According to them, that Dave, he's got in the lem, he's taken the photo of that mountain through the window just before they blast off to come home. You're gonna laugh your knackers off when you see what's on top of that bloody mountain. <laughs> Well, folks, do you recognize the top of this mountain? Let's take a real close look at those so-called rocks at the top of that mountain in the original Apollo 15 photo. Look at that, folks. Here's what the brilliant expat Taffy recognizes in that photo from Apollo. A little bit vague, but recognizable. What I can recognize amongst that on the top of the mountain, which Cornelius Crew thinks is a load of rocks, I can recognize the faint outline of a rover, the back wheel, an astronaut in the seat, and on the front, very recognizable, on a pole, the aerial dish. And further to the right, what you can see is the RCEP gear. And what I have done, I've inserted a larger photo of this RCEP gear. Notice what it is, it's a square box with a tilted area, which is precisely what you've got on the right. So what we've got there, folks, is an astronaut driving a rover at the top of a mountain where they never went, and gear set up on the top of the mountain where they never worked and it was left there after Dave Scott got in the lem and fired up and came back home. So here we've got a fake Apollo photo photographed 40 years later by a fake Kai Gear orbital satellite. Now how can a photo by Kai Gear be genuine when it's photographing a fake object that's not even there? Well, what do you think of that folks? Everybody enjoy the video? Is there anybody out there now convinced that the photos by this Celine or Kai Gear are genuine? Oh, and by the way, I'm still waiting for those two numbskulls, Joan Evans and One Big Monkey, to make a video each, showing at least 10 photos each of what they claim to be genuine Celine photos. Photos, photos, photos.